pepper spray? You don't even need that. Who's Tony Shattery? Tony Shattery's for women's self-defense. Yes. The attacker comes in a parking garage. You go, ah, season. Every chef knows there are unbreakable rules in the kitchen, but what happens when you actually break these rules? Do the food gods rain fiery vengeance upon thee, or are they arbitrary myths peddled from chef to chef just waiting to get busted? To find out, I've assembled a team of highly trained culinary professionals to put them to the test. This is Myth Munchers. <laughs> what happened? We, I, I heard you rise, and then it was in silence. This is Myth Munchers! All right, a highly trained team of culinary professionals. So, so we're testing out fried chicken myths today, right? I love fried chicken, you love fried chicken. We all make a fair amount of fried chicken. We've eaten a lot of fried chicken here. We've never tested out myths, and there certainly are a lot of them. All right, number one, you got a buttermilk brine your chicken. We don't know if that's true. We did the turkey, we found out brining works, but we don't know if that translates to fried chicken. Number two, you gotta double dredge your chicken. Everyone advertises extra crispy, right? More breading is better. Don't know if that's the case. Number three, this is my personal one. I believe you have to let your chicken rest with the flour on it to let it soak in. So we're gonna test out resting. And then number four, you gotta fry in a cast iron because they say pan contact in the cast iron makes it better than deep fryer. How does the Popeyes do it? Don't worry about Popeyes, worry about yourself. But that's good chicken. All right, and to illustrate all these myths, I know that sounded confusing, but I've created a very simple and easy to read chart. So what we got here. <clears throat> Whoa. Easy to what? read? Yeah, this is how my brain works. So left here, to right, right to left, how do you do this? It's like the Torah, you just go in a circle. You know, it's all, I, I took three <laughs> weeks of Hebrew school, I don't you really know. You guys get that joke? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so check it so, so first we got buttermilk versus dry brine, right? And then there's so many different routes we could go. You go from buttermilk to single dredge, then double dredge, but then here you go like, we do a couple dredges, and then it's like, how do I find the buttered milk? We're not really sure, but first we need to find a chicken to lend us its meat. Also, did you know that dinosaurs were on Earth for like way longer than we are? I mean, we're talking millions of years. Humans have been around for like 2,000 years. I mean, the Earth's only about 4,000 years old. I mean, watch a YouTube video, dang. But I understand that this might not be the best way to understand it, so we also got I've been told that this is Whoa. easier to read for some people. To me, I see this and my mind goes blank. No idea what it says. So we're splitting up into pairs. It's me and V versus you two, but uh, actually we're working together. I just need to find an antagonist in my life to give me some sort of motivation. So we're gonna take step one, which is buttermilk brine versus not buttermilk brining. Then we're gonna pass off to you almost like a relay race, right? Nicole loves sports. She did so many sports in high school. So this is like a relay race. And then you are gonna test single dredge versus double dredge. Then you're gonna come back to us with the results and we're gonna test resting. And then we're all gonna come together and fry it. And um, uh, more than anything, we're just gonna eat eat like 9,000 calories with a fried chicken today, which is very exciting for all of us, I believe. I don't eat a lot of food. That sounds like it would upset my tummy. Trevor only eats goldfish. Anyways, point is, we are also going to write down our own predictions, because I want to see who's going to come the closest to what actually yields the best results. So Trevor, you pass those out. We're going to all write down our cards, and then we're going to reveal them in secrets, and then we're going to find out who wins, and then good news, winner gets fried chicken. Oh, I didn't give out Sharpies, just pick I'm one? sorry. So you're going to pick what combination you think is going to work the best. Do you think it's going to be no brine, single dredge, unrested, and a cast iron? Do you think it's going to be butter milk brine, double dredged, one hour rested, deep fried, who knows? Write down your combination right now. We're all gonna reveal them at the end. Uh, we're gonna pick a winner and, and you win a $50 gift card to Popeye's Chicken. That is real, I will fund that money. Out of my own pocket, I'm like Mark Cuban from the Shark Tank. Not only is this my prediction, but this is the correct answer. It is buttermilk brined, it is single dredged, it is rested for one hour, it is deep fried at exactly 330 degrees in peanut oil for exactly 11 minutes until the temperature reaches 162 degrees. Also, Tony Shashery's rules. My name is Trevor. This is me. This is a chicken that I drew. I'm saying mmm chicken. Today I've predicted that buttermilk brine with a double dredge with rested for an hour and deep fryer fried is going to be the best. My prediction today, butt milk, single dredge, one hour rest, and deep fry. Buttermilk, single dredge, rest one hour, deep fry. All right, y'all, we got our plan set out right now. We owe it to the home cook to figure out what the best combination of fried chicken steps are to reach the best and juiciest chicken. Are you ready to do it? Of course! Yeah. Because this is Meat Munchers! Superstar. V Jobs. Yes. You're back in the turtleneck. Yes, I am. I love that for us. All right, so we are testing out buttermilk brining versus not buttermilk brining. They yes. say that to get the juiciest, most tenderest chicken, you gotta brine it in buttermilk because there are acids and enzymes in buttermilk and that gets the seasoning all the way through, gives you some juicy tender bird meat. Okay. So there's obviously a ton of different variables to fried chicken, but for this purpose, we are establishing a control method that most restaurants are probably using. So that's a single dredge fried chicken fried somewhere between 330 and 350 in a deep fryer. That is what we're going for today, just to test out the juiciness and isolate that variable. Because this is science, V. You're, you're V Jobs. You're a scientist. Uh, 
Except I'm an artist. That's actually true. I create things. Steve Jobs didn't even know how to code. No, he didn't actually. I'm the J Josh Wozniak to your V Jobs. I will happily accept that. <laughs> Okay, and also, as far as control goes, uh, okay. we need a universal seasoning. And what better universal seasoning than Tony Shasheries? Tony Shasheries! The greatest seasoning known to mankind. We've consumed so much of this. We've inhaled so much of it. Man. And they're not a sponsor. But they should be. I'm winking. Wait, we gotta wink on three. One, two. So you're gonna season two of those chicken legs up and just get them resting in a bowl, and then I'm gonna get going with this buttermilk brine. Okay. The ratio that we have found is that one quart of buttermilk to one and a half tablespoons of Tony Shasheries is the way to go. And again, uh, uh, maybe use a mask. I know, I got like 12 of them. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you're breathing it in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We made up oh. a song about how Tony Shasheries gets in your lungs. Trevor will sing it later. We don't wanna bore you with the song. I'm just hoping my boogers don't come out. No, no, it's great. It seasons the boogies. All right, so always season your buttermilk brines. This is what really gets all that salt in there. We got that chicken seasoned up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what makes it so good. When you get the garlic powder into the alveoli in your lungs. I don't know what that is, but this is... It's like ravioli, but alveoli. Pepper spray? You don't even need that. Use Tony Shasheries. Tony Shasheries for women's self-defense. Yes. The attacker comes in a parking garage. You go, ah, seasoned. Coming 2024. Garlic powder. All right, so all mm. we're going to do... <laughs> All we're gonna do is we're gonna get these chicken legs Ew. soaking in this brine. Always when you're buttermilk brining, make sure that you're giving like ample room for the chicken to swim around. If you pack it and the brine's not really gonna get in there, give it a nice little cover. Okay. Now we're gonna let this rest. Uh, I'm a fan of brining for like at least 12 hours. People say you can do it for as little as like four or something. Mm -hmm. We're gonna let both these rest overnight. And okay. then we're gonna come back and we're, we're gonna go <laughs> fight with Tony Shasheries in the parking lot. We're gonna have a little Tony C's duel. Yes, I might win. Pocket sand. So we got this yes. flour that is very heavily seasoned with Tony Shasheries. Always okay. season your flour and your frying chicken. Right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the buttermilk brine that's been sitting overnight. I'm gonna give it a nice little shake to get some of that excess liquid off, get it in the flour, then drop it in the fryer. Even if you are just dry brining chicken, you need to get some sort of wet on it for flour to stick. Got so it. you're gonna give it a brief dip in the buttermilk, then you're gonna shake it off, and then you're gonna dredge that, and then we'll put them in the fryer at the same time. Cool, bath, dry off, jacuzzi. That is how I do it at home. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. great. I used to actually sneak into the uh, Ritz-Carlton jacuzzi back in high school. I used to hop the fence. Really? Yeah, yeah, and then manager would sometimes like accost us and I'd be like, do you know who my father is? And it was pretty fun. All right, give it a nice little shake and then we're gonna get both these in there. Always make sure to like really pack the flour in when you're frying chicken because that buttermilk's gonna absorb a lot of it. So really like get in there and kind of massage it. You know, like when you're drying off, you get like a nice massage and then you jump into the jacuzzi? Yeah, sure. All right, so I got these. I'm gonna drop them in the front because Okay, B... wait, you gotta wait for me. Oh yeah, This is quick waiting. drop. Waiting. Yeah, yeah quick drop. Quick drop. Yeah, there you go, there you go, yeah, shake it, shake it, shake it. Like a Polaroid picture. Yeah, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Yes, shake it, yes, yes. Shake it, shake it. Okay, I'm ready. One, two, two three. three. Drop and then walk away. Ooh, like a LeBron. Ooh. Oh, oh, Tony Shasheries, oh no, that was pepper spray. There is a clear difference in both of these. Yeah, you can definitely see the buttermilk got darker, but we're not testing for looks right now. We're not testing for batter. We are right. solely testing for juiciness and tenderness. Ah, say less, say less. All right, all right, which one are we doing? Which one are we doing? Should we go buttermilk first? Uh, let's do no, 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 let's do the other one. Okay. I'm sorry. Why, why did I do it? My I side, my side, my okay. side. Cheers. All right. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wow, juice. Oh my god. Oh god, it's so good. That is so good. Oh. I miss fried chicken. I didn't eat breakfast either. This is great. <laughs> I, what know. A treat. I can't imagine a juicier or more tender chicken. Again, these are cooked in the same temperature and time. God, that's good. I know, I just want to keep eating it. You know what I think we're gonna learn today? What? Is that fried chicken is just really good. <laughs> yes, that okay. is the main point. Okay. All right, so we got that there. Buttermilk. Pick up the buttermilk. I'm sorry for taking the bigger one. It's <laughs> no judgment whatsoever. All right, all right, all right. Mmm. Whoa. That's really okay. interesting. The thing with the buttermilk is it's not more tender and it's not more juicy. Mm -hmm. All it does is it tastes like buttermilk. There's a little bit of like acid yeah. and sourness to it. I prefer the dry brine. Really? What do you prefer? So I might similar. have to agree with you that the dry brine tastes like a little bit better. To me, all you're getting is a slightly distracting flavor from buttermilk. Again, if you're doing white meat, this might be different because we tested this with turkey. We found out that the wet brine for the mm, turkey did make the white meat a lot juicier. But for dark meat, I mean, I'm purely a dark meat fried chicken person. I, I love me a fried chicken breast and I love wings, but like mm -hmm. to me, legs and thighs are really where it's at. That one just tastes like really buttery to me. Mm -hmm. So this one just kind of has like a very settling taste. So I like that one. Yeah, too. I think this 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 dry brine for me is the winner. I'm calling it. Are you willing to call it? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Boom. Okay, so I'm going to text Trevor and Nicole in the other kitchen. This to me is an upset. Why? I thought buttermilk fried chicken was going to win. I thought so too. I'm not going to lie. But we're texting them. No Brian. Okay. Trevor renamed our group chat to Tony C's Glamour Girls. God dang yeah. it. 
I will take that. All right, texted Trevor. Uh, if you like it, uh, Trevor! My, Nicole! I, I can't open this, it's too greasy. No buttermilk! Boop, boop. Nicole, we've what? received a text from Josh. Let me see. It's incomprehensible. He uh, said, Der B and B. That means dry brine one. How? I, I'm fluent in Josh and he's, okay, yeah, it looks like dry brine one, what a trip. But uh, let's get started, shall we? I'm so excited. we are testing single dredge versus double dredge. Apparently the myth is that double dredge is always better. Yeah, yeah. Isn't, isn't it supposed to get crispier? Yeah, like crispier and like there's like layers to it and when it crunches, it like it's really, really crunchy. So we have our dry brine chickens here. I think we should make a little bit of a buttermilk brine just to dip it so the second dredge yeah. will stick on the chicken. Stick, stick on, on the, the chicken. chicken. Stick on, on the chicken. chicken. So, are you gonna tell everybody at home what the Tony Shashery song is? Oh, yes. Tony Shashery, it gets in your lungs, it makes it so you can breathe. Tony, Tony Shashery, Tony <coughs> Shashery. <coughs> yeah, see, it's already happening. What do you want okay, to do? Okay, you can go ahead and single dredge, and I'm gonna double dredge. You'll be responsible for the single. Okay, do you want me to dip the single in buttermilk, or you just want wet chicken no, going I in flour? No, I think wet chicken going in flour. Okay. We don't want any influence from the buttermilk. No, no, no influence. No buttermilk in influence. And Josh always tells me you gotta pack your chicken. You gotta gently caress it in the flour wow, so it gets in the job. crevasses. Wow, look at those crevasses. Mm, yeah, all right, there's my chicken. Beautiful, let me go ahead and do mine. So we got single. I'm pretty sure this is gonna make more crevasses or more little crunchy bits. It is gonna make. I, super I don't know how the Popeyes does it, but I like it at the Popeyes. Do you know how they do it? Why are you slapping the chicken? Listen. <laughs> You can hear Tony Shasher. <laughs> okay, He's really, really out quick there. getting the. Oh, oh my God, that's so aggressive. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be aggressive. Oh my goodness. Are we going into the fryer? Yeah, I think we should wash our hands maybe, or nah, screw it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go in the front seas and you'll go in the back seas. Okay. okay. Oh, <laughs> Tony Shasher, where are you? I'm oh. right over here. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, and now we wait. Nicole. Yeah. There seems to be some sort of weather phenomenon going on outside. Yes, it is as the water is coming down from the sky. The How gods bizarre. are angry. Why? What the do we do? The chicken gods are angry that we chose dry brine over the bottom. But what if we're right? Let's see. Single dredge? Single dredge. Okay. Okay. This like looks, so we're testing for crispiness, right? Yeah, this looks sad. Okay, this looks really sad and not very crispy, but. Wow. No crispiness. I give it a crisp factor of zero. I give it about a one. Zero Great flavor five. though. It, right? it does taste good. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Now this beautiful, this looks, gorgeous model. Oh my god! All right. Stunning. Mm. Mm, wow. wow. So crispity, mm. so crunchity. Wow. It's so juicy. I think they chose right. This is very juicy. Yeah. But this I think, crisp. I think we're on the road to finding chicken nirvana, just as Josh said. Nicole, I think double dredge is. Well, I don't think we know we for know. a fact. Double dredge is far and away the better option. One million percent, we should let them know. Okay. When I say double, you say dredge. Double. Dredge. Double. Dredge. When I say double, you say dredge. Double. What? No. Dredge. See, we've learned a lot today. So we have learned okay. that buttermilk brine did not win and that dry brining is the way to go. We have learned that double dredge is better than single dredge. So now mm -hmm. we have to test for the resting factor. So we got some double dredge chicken here that has been rested for an hour and my belief is that this will make the flour cling to the chicken better. So you're not right. gonna get those little gaps in there. You don't let steam escape through. But the biggest thing that we learned is that Trevor's got the voice of an angel. Yes, he really does. He needs to be a gospel singer. But, see I got a little ditty for you. Oh, really? Tony Shahashahareens Seasons chicken so clean The best seeds are honey Still no MSG Ooh, I felt that in my soul. Someone auto-tune that though? All right, so we got the rest of chicken and uh, I need you to take okay. this and we're gonna double dredge this fresh. So that's gonna yes. go into the buttermilk, butter, shake it off, shake it. into the flour, back to the buttermilk, shake it off, back in the flour. Let's right? do it. And then we're gonna we're gonna do this at the same time. Here, you want me to do one? Yeah, why not? They were doing, like, we're hearing through the walls. We're doing cheerleading chants. Yes, we are. I can do the splits. I do not wanna see what that looks like. Oh no, you wanna see it, it's real impressive. All right, cool, so I'm gonna Curry drop this powder in everywhere. the rear. All right, so we got on three, three, Wait. two, oh God dang it, V. Okay. Right. I'm so sorry for yelling. I, I've been yelling a lot lately and I'm trying to stop. Three, two, two one. Bums away, oh gosh. Ah, oh, that sound, it's so beautiful. Chicken fry. I, was, I wasn't talking about your voice. I'm I was so talking sorry. about I the thought, chicken fry. I thought we were back to the voice. No. These things. No. 
V, I'm not much one for saying grace, but I just want to say how thankful I am that it is our job today to eat all this fried chicken. We truly are blessed for all this chicken. Amen, because this is exciting. All right, so we got the one hour rested here, because you're a minute rest here. Now we can start getting into it. I mean, we're testing for structure here, because I believe that you can get air pockets when you don't rest it. When you rest it, it lets the flour absorb some of the moisture. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they look kind of similar, but you do see some more uneven crags on this one. Just wait a second. <laughs> Sorry, I get, you gotta educate me first. All right, let's, let's try the unrested double dredge first. This is what Trevor Nicole decided was the best. Okay. I mean, this looks good. To me, this is the, the look of fried chicken right here. Ooh. Oh, oh, so crispy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, but the air pockets, right? It's kind of falling off a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it's a little, no. Oh, oh, there's my air pocket. Okay, right, right there. Okay, so we saw some air pockets, but again, I, I can't imagine like a like a better fried chicken than that. That's so good though. Let's get into the rested one because this is what I do with my fried okay, chicken. Okay, wait, I wasn't done with that one, <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm ready. You got science to do, dude. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so you're seeing like some of the buttermilk came through. All right, you're just going in. That's fine. I'll talk. I'll talk. Don't mind me. Seeing some of the buttermilk came through, which like actually caramelized That's in the what fryer. Anyway, this one has way more flavor. I'm trying to look at these right now. This almost seems to get okay. So I think this one. Is like kind of crispier, the coating on it. And then this one, I mean, you do see it literally is adhering to the chicken better, right? Like, mm -hmm. like push up on this, the breading comes off. Push up on this, the breading doesn't. Oh, I see what you mean, okay. The rest of one, I'm not getting the flakiness that I want. Mm-hmm. Mm. I gotta bite this one again. Oh, oh. Oh, mm. oh, it's so good. That is incredible. I have way too much chicken in my tooth. Even though this is my myth, I was pretty skeptical of it, but the resting did its job. This is a more structurally sound chicken, and that came through in the flavor because you get all the flavors in one bite even cleaner. So we got to tell Trevor and Nicole, yeah, they got to come over here and we got to test the final myth. Yes. Where my paper airplane? Uh, uh, right here, right here. I got chicken grease, but <sighs> you grab it. No, no, the grease is going to, oh, I can't even grab the Sharpie. I'm so greasy. <laughs> oh, God, I'm slipping. Oh, God. <laughs> You are messing right. it up completely. Get rest. Fly like paper, get high like planes. And that was a pretty good throw, actually. Where am I get there? The grease helped it go. It's getting to him. Yeah, okay. I have received your correspondence. <laughs> Did you send the carrier pigeon back? <laughs> Uh, yeah, these are the carrier pigeons that we have butchered and slaughtered. No, so w we figured out the best route to fried chicken, right? It's a dry brine, it's double dredged that's been rested an hour, but now is the final myth. We gotta test cast iron versus your standard deep fryer. So we're switching from the deep fryer because we figured most people at home, right? They're deep frying in a pot. You're getting pretty much the same effect in the deep fryer. And we're testing that against a shallow fry in a cast iron. A lot of people insist that chicken has to be fried in a cast iron or some heavy bottom pot because you're getting pan contact with the fried chicken that adds browning, right? Maillard reactions, flavor, V jobs, you know, science, titism, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's out there with the planets doing God knows what. What I'm saying is, we should fry some chicken. <laughs> Yes. Okay, let's do it. So uh, I'm gonna drop just four chicken legs into the deep fryer. We're doing this at both the same temperature. Oh, and then okay. Nicole, you're gonna drop four in there and you gotta move it around about every minute. So you're okay. gonna be constantly sort of flipping there. Grab Can I use tongs? No, use your hands. No, I'm not. Into the fryer, Nicole, you gotta go quick. You gotta go quick, you gotta go quick, you gotta go quick, you gotta go quick, you gotta go quick. So I have these dropped in the deep fryer. Thank you. I got a little oil in my fingies. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. You see you got some of that chicken sticking out there and then about every minute you're gonna flip that over because you can see it's actually resting against the pan. So we're gonna test what creates the best flavor. Myth munchers. I'm sticky. All right, let's flip it. Flip it. Wow, look at that look at my that. yard reaction. My yard reaction. Wow, who's my yard and what's this reaction? Am I right? He's like a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? No, I think I went deaf in my neck here. <laughs> so if you see like this browning here, right? That's what people say cast iron does better. But I don't know if that's actually going to create a more flavorful chicken. Why do we have all four of us here? I feel like I'm hugging all my we children. We love each other. Don't, please don't touch me. I get anxious when people touch me. All right, so if you see the browning right here, that's why people say cast iron has the advantage because you're getting, you know, the extra flavor bits from those slightly darker pieces. <laughs> so I think you're gonna get a more even <laughs> coating on this one. And, but this one, maybe you'll get more flavor. Please no one touch me. All right, so we got the deep fried chicken out and we got the cast iron fried chicken out. You see there's like some more excess browning on that. So the cast iron definitely did its job. These are probably gonna taste different. Should we, should we uh, start with the deep fryer? Yeah, that's a great idea. Great. Yeah. I'm gonna take the baby one. All right. I take this one. Do you smell it? Yeah, of course. You smell like chicken? Mmm. I mean, it's fried chicken, you know? Did you guys learn that eating fried chicken is just a fun time? Yeah. That's what we learned. Yeah. yeah. I learned that I love my job for reasons such as this. Okay. Classic, evenly fried, crispy, breading stays on there. Now let's try this cast iron. Am I going for the <laughs> big yeah, honk and yeah, yeah. no, we'll probably stay in the same. Okay. You, uh, you touched my chicken, but I'm eating. Yeah, no, I didn't. I think we maybe okay, got fine. a little bit more grease soakage in this. Let's focus on the flavor. Hot. 
Mm. Oh my goodness. Look at this steam coming out. I have to smell this one. Smell the difference. What? You smell the difference. There's a noticeable like roasty, toasty, not only, I mean smell on the cast iron, but then that aroma, it comes through in the flavor. Like you're getting these kind of like, it's not burnt. I mean, it really just is browning flavor that I didn't think would affect anything. But like now that I'm eating them side by side. <laughs> oh my oh. mouth is The cast hot. iron is like next level. Next mm. level. Yeah. 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 Oh. So much juicier. The chicken itself is a juice bomb. And the skin yeah, to yeah. skin difference is like so noticeable. It gets crispier because of that pan contact. You're getting that extra crunch on there. Wow. Dang, that ain't no myth. That hits, That that is good. Big hitter. All right, so as we found out, cast iron is the way to go. It does create a more flavorful fried chicken. Definitely. You're not seeing this half this- my microphone. Half the episode shows us grunting. All right, so that makes our top at-home fried chicken preparation a dry brine, double dredge, one hour rest, cast iron fried, slathered all over with Tony Shasheries fried chicken. Please go out there, make some fried chicken. Well, I don't have to lobby for fried chicken. Yeah, the world loves it. All right, so everyone take out your wieners. Let's see what you wrote down at the beginning. What were your predictions? Buttermilk, uh, single dredge, uh, rest. Uh, I said cast iron, and then I crossed it out and I said deep fry. I said butt milk for the first one, single dredge, one hour rest, and deep fry. I said buttermilk brine, double dredge, rested within the deep fryer. Me and V got the same, oh my God, it's like the newlywed game. I said butt milk, single dredge, one hour rest, deep fry. We all guessed butt milk. We all guessed butt milk. We, sure we all gave into the myths yeah. of big buttermilk without having done the science ourselves, but now that we know, we like Plato's cave, we have been liberated. We now do not only see the shadows flickering against the walls, we're able to experience the real world of fried chicken if I told you that everything you had been raised with was a lie. Matrix. Hey, thank you. Yeah, I got yeah, it. Uh, uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Yes. So what? <laughs> What have we all really learned today? Is it about fried chicken? Is it about friendship? Is it about the scientific process? Is it about the fact that the planets are all orbiting around the sun, that when we all look up into the stars, we see the same moon? That on one side of the earth, we are still viewing the same light that has traveled for millions of years. And that, my friends, that is the real fried chicken of your heart. Thank you so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We have new episodes every week. We have new, subtle episodes of our podcast, A Hot Dog's a Sandwich, every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> Hit us up <laughs> on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen, with pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag, dreams become food. We, <laughs> oh yes, we will see you next time. Get as messy as you want in your own kitchen when you have the Mythical Kitchen Towel, available now at mythical.com.